pain before it starts. Today on Dr. Oz, the paleo lifestyle is praised for weight loss. Could it be the solution for your pain? No pills, no gimmicks, and no more hurting. It's just been a game changer for me. How to power pack your plate for pain relief. We have to allow for a little bit of cheating. This is a margarita that was made with avocado. That's really good. Coming up next on Dr. Oz. The paleo lifestyle. It's been touted for weight loss, but there's a new reason to consider this popular trend. It could be the solution for your pain. No pills, no gimmicks, and no more hurting. Today, the paleo diet is as popular as ever and shows no signs of slowing down. There's no calorie counting, no portion control, and no dairy, grains, or sugar. Instead, the paleo diet gets back to prehistoric basics, focusing on meat, vegetables, healthy fats, and nuts. Advocates say the paleo diet can be effective for weight loss, and now some think this diet may also be the new frontier in pain management. Paleo foods are rich in omega-3s and antioxidants that have anti-inflammatory properties, which may ease back pain, arthritis, stiffness, and joint pain. I had really terrible irritable bowel syndrome, lower abdominal pain, bloating, cramps, also had terrible migraines and lower back pain that would wake me up in the middle of the night. I heard about the paleo diet through word of mouth. It was a game changer for me. All of my symptoms subsided after I tried the paleo diet. So I was suffering from excruciating knee pain for over a year. My knees were completely swollen and I couldn't even use the stairs anymore. I tried over-the-counter medications, I tried supplements, nothing seemed to help at all. I initially started the paleo diet um, as a way to keep fit and to lose weight. But what I was really surprised by is that my knee pain completely went away. Um, I was also suffering from back pain and that went away as well and today I feel wonderful. Mark Simpson is a leading expert in the paleo lifestyle and the author of The Primal Blueprint. He's here to help us with this. You actually had a pain problem that you believe the paleo approach cured. I had several. I had irritable bowel syndrome for 35 years. It literally dictated my life. And then at the age of 45, I started getting arthritis in my hands and feet. So when I went to the paleo lifestyle, within 30 days, all my aches and pains disappeared forever. Well, so far. And, and it, was, it was transforming, really. Are these shoes a reflection of your foot pain, or is that, does that, do you get those with the Paleo Pro well, program? A little of both. I mean, these allow free movement. We're going to talk about that today. The fact that I'm not bound in restrictive shoes and I can move my, my joints around. All right, so we've got two guests, Elaine and Julie, you saw in the little tape package. They're in our audience. They say they cured their pain with the Paleo. Elaine, you've had stomach pain, I gather. I've had, similar to Mark, IBS for over 10 years and just terrible lower abdominal pain, cramping, bloating. It, it really dictated my life as well. And how has it been since going on the paleo Since program? I've gone paleo, the symptoms have been gone. It's just been a game changer for me. And Julie, you had knee pain. I did, Dr. Oz. I'm a very physically active person. I love to run, I love to hike, and it was getting to the point that I was suffering from such bad knee pain that I could no longer enjoy the activities that I love. After starting on the paleo diet, the pain went away within like seven to 10 days. It was amazing. That quickly? Yeah. All right, let's get to it. We've got a paleo plan that okay. promises these kinds of results, and I'm excited about it because I think we use too many pills. And there are things we can take into our body in other ways, not a pill form might work. Step one is to eliminate inflammatory foods, grains, dairy, and refined sugars. All the examples you give here. Absolutely. So these are the foods that can upset our immune systems and cause the immune systems to put us into a state of inflammation. And inflammation is at the root of most pains. Uh, so in particular, grains can irritate the lining of the intestines, can cause gas, bloating, um, IBS. You eliminate these foods and you are literally treating pain at the source. Let me show you what we're talking about. This is a fundamental insight about what happens when you eat these kinds of inflammatory foods. And besides the grains, again, the dairy and the, the, the simple carbohydrates, the sugars become a problem. Think of your body as having a continuous flame, but it's on low burn, you want that. The inflammation is always in there, but your body's actually helping to keep it quiet, but it's ready to spring up at any moment. When you eat foods like the grains we showed, the dairy, some of these processed foods, it's like throwing tinder into the fire. The fire gets large, too large for you to control. It gets larger and bigger and faster. Now it's this burning flame inside your body that can lead to the irritable bowel we heard about, the joint pain, the headaches. 
all these other back pain types of problems, and many, many more kinds of issues. So you take a good thing, a little bit of inflammation that your body can use to protect itself, and you turn it into a raging force fire that you no longer control. So let's take this idea into step two, which is to build a paleo plate of pain-reducing foods. And they work principally by doing the opposite of what these foods that we don't want to have would do. So explain to us the components of the paleo plate. Okay, so contrary to popular belief, the paleo diet isn't a meat-centric diet. The majority of your plate should be colorful vegetables. There should be some protein on there, so some like a palm size, not the fingers, but the palm size portion of protein. Generally a dollop, as we say, of healthy fats. Right. And if you have a sweet tooth, maybe some fruit. So again, contrary to popular cultural yeah. belief, it's not all that. Now, let's go through very specifically. Start with the cruciferous vegetables, which are a big part of the veggies. Right, here. so all the veggies have great properties, but the cruciferous, for people who are in pain in particular, contain sulforaphanes. Mm -hmm. Now, the sulforaphanes have been shown in research to block the enzymes that degrade the, um, the parts of the joints that are giving us the, the, the movement. Right. So when you uh, have osteoarthritis or leading toward osteoarthritis, the cruciferous vegetables, the kale, the broccoli, the cabbage, uh, the Brussels sprouts are great choices. You yeah, have berries, I noticed. You don't have other types of fruit as much. Why are the berries so important? So fruit exists on a spectrum of awesome to not quite so awesome. And at the awesome end are the berries because they're low in sugar, but they're high in phytonutrients, antioxidants, and anti-inflammatory properties. All right, then we have the omega-3s. These are all the, you know, the fish oils kinds of things, but you also have the fish themselves, which is your protein source here. Right, so omega-3s are the anti-inflammatory healthy fats that we want to try to get more of in our diet. Salmon is like the, the go-to for uh, omega-3s. Um, the, the salmon itself is rich in omega-3s. The salmon skin is even richer in omega-3s. But you can also go to uh, oily fish. I know you're a fan of sardines. I love them. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, Grass-fed meats, uh, eggs from pastured hens, all are great sources of omega-3 fatty acids. Yeah, and just to point out again, the skin has most of the omega-3s. I didn't know that, actually, yeah. but I do like that part the most. Uh, let's talk about oils for a second. A lot of folks run away from these oils, but there are specific ones you think are val very valuable for the paleo program. Well, so coconut oil oil, um, olive oil for sure, but avocado oil is my favorite for the paleo program uh, because it has, it's rich in monounsaturated fats, it has a lot of antioxidants, again we're looking for these anti-inflammatory properties that these foods have, and it has components that help the joints repair themselves. So it's, uh, and it's, it's just, a, it's, and it's wonderful tasting. Two tablespoonfuls a day? Uh, yeah, I mean that's, that, uh, maybe even per meal, I mean there's, oh. yeah, we're, we're, we're talking about using healthy fats to, uh, to an extent that uh, these will enhance our lives with the taste of the food. We can cook with avocado oil. It's got a high smoke point, so it's a, it's a wonderful choice all around. And finally, spices, turmeric spices in particular. Well, all your spice rack seems to be the best place to go for these anti-inflammatory and pain-relieving properties. I mean, uh, cinnamon, clove, rosemary, garlic, these are all possessing high antioxidant values. Mm -hmm. Uh, but my favorite is turmeric, and because it contains curcumin, which has been shown in a lot of studies to boost the body's production of glutathione. Now, glutathione is sort of our internal antioxidant system. So I've not talked about this on the show, but when I do a, a workout or play a sport, I always take a shot of turmeric right when I'm done, which is the reason I think I don't have to crawl out of bed the next morning, because otherwise that would definitely happen to me. Okay, right. these are just a couple of examples uh, of some plates that Elaine and Julie sent to us. Notice there, you know, these paleo programs, very easy to, to create, but notice also, you can't really tell which one's breakfast and which one's lunch and which one's dinner, can you? <laughs> it's, a, it's impossible to tell. Mark, you actually say we shouldn't be able to tell the difference. Right, there's no, there's no right time to eat protein. It's every time is the right time to eat protein. So if your breakfast consists of you know, some salmon or some turkey or a lamb chop left over from last night's dinner, that's a paleo meal. A paleo meal is a paleo meal no matter when you eat it. Yeah. That's the big difference for a lot of us because breakfast almost always comes from this table over here. The stuff that we don't want to be eating all the time. Right? This is a typical breakfast food we will have, grains with some dairy. But if we eat last night's leftovers, which many cultures do, mm -hmm. you're more effectively mimicking paleo. Okay, let's get to the 80-20 rule. There has to be a 20, an, an ability to cheat a little bit. All right, so 80% of the time you do the right thing. Right. 20% of the time, what happens? So, well, we strive for 100%, but the paleo diet is intended to be a lifetime uh, sustainable eating strategy. So we have to allow for a little bit of cheating. Um, if you come in at the end of the week and you tried for 100 and you came to 80%, it's all good, you're on your way to better health. Uh, but it's really about sustainability, and these are some of my favorite cheats. Well, explain, these are, these are, usually alcohol is not the first, I mean, maybe people do go to alcohol for pain, right. but they shouldn't be going to alcohol for pain. Right, right. So how does this, uh, this approach help with the pain? Well, uh, alcohol in general 
uh, is not necessarily a great thing for people to consume in quantities. The ethanol is toxic. But certain forms of alcohol, uh, either at the end of the day and you're not good at handling stress, maybe to take the edge off, that might have a benefit in and of itself. But also, the hops in beer have an anti-inflammatory property, so one or two beers once in a while would be appropriate. Uh, red wine, known for the resveratrol content, which has been uh, researched tremendously over the past few decades. Uh, so again, it, it has almost analgesic properties in some mice studies. Yeah. Uh, and finally, uh, tequila, if you're, if you're going for the hard stuff, uh, it's low in sugar. It has no, basically no carbohydrate. This is a margarita that was made with avocado, and that smells good, doesn't it? And That's really uh, good. Yeah, and some, and some orange. And you can spice it up with some cayenne pepper. Again, another great antioxidant from the spice rack. Elaine, which is your choice here of pain-killing tools? I got to say, I love my glass of red wine. So, Julie, I mean, seriously, I, I could do the 80-20, I think, but when I started the 20, it could grow to 50 pretty fast. So how do you hold yourself back from taking the extra glass of wine or having one every single evening? Well, I do enjoy my dark chocolate, I have to say. But when I look at things like alcohol for me, unfortunately, and dairy and bagels and things like that, I start more thinking about how bad it's going to make me feel mm -hmm. rather than how good it's going to taste. Well, that's a good compelling reason. I mean, that's true. You'll feel much better in a minute for not having done it. I right, come over here. Step four has anything to do with food. Step four is about changing your position every 10 minutes. And right. We're going to put the audience through something in a second, but why is that so important? Well, so our bodies are designed to move. Uh, our genes expect us to move through space all day long. And here we are in this modern society confined to a chair at work or we're standing up at a, at a counter or even a stand-up desk isn't necessarily the answer. The answer is to just find ways to move through space throughout the day whenever you can. Now, if you're at work, that means getting up out of your desk and walking around the office if your boss will allow you to do that, yep. of course. Um, or it may, it, it may, exactly. Or it may just mean changing your seating position. Maybe spin the chair around and, and sit you know, toward the back of the chair or cross your legs. Uh, if, Everyone stand for a second. So I'll do this together. How many of you have crossed legs here, this and that? You stand and then sit right back down again. No one's going to mind you doing this. Right. Cross <laughs> differently, flex something, do something. <laughs> when, when we're confined to one space all day long, we get shortened hip flexors, shortened IT bands, shortened Achilles, and those are sort of the root causes of some of the aches and pains that we carry around with us all day long. So mobility is so huge here. Yeah, and fidgeting, which is part of this, helps with a lot of different things that even go beyond paleo. Elaine, Julie, please join me if you don't mind. The last step is something uh, that we often don't talk about in conjunction with paleo, but it's so important, Mark argues, in this area, which, which is to, how to, to sleep differently, literally sleep differently. We can use our pillows. So you can, you can grab, grab a bed, but Mark, come over here for a second. Yeah. Why is sleep so important for pain? Well, sleep time is when the body repairs itself. Between quality sleep and the quality nutrients from the paleo diet, mm. your body can rebuild, renew, regenerate, recreate itself. The genes are actually working overnight to do that and get rid of your pain. Now, quality sleep sort of is, is dependent upon this built-in, hardwired, diurnal rhythm that we have, which would, it would suggest that we would go to bed when the sun goes down and wake up when the sun comes up. Not all of us do that all the time, but that's the ideal scenario. So you'd go to bed before 10 p.m., wake up before 7. And we have pillow tricks you want to show us. These are for right. specific pains that are very common in America. If you don't mind, explain sure. how we can sure. use pillows to deal with our pains while we're recovering with the paleo program. Absolutely, and that's a good point because a lot of times you'll recover these from, the, from the diet and you won't need these strategies. But for now, if you have stomach pain, I had uh, GERD a lot. I had heartburn. Sleeping on the left side will help control that acid reflux that happens. So just, just sleeping on your left side um, is, a, is a quick, simple fix. Now, you might want to uh, take more than one pillow if you're sleeping on your side because you want the head, you want the neck, and the tailbone to be in alignment as you're sleeping. Okay? Now, over, the, over years, I suggest people try to get the firmest mattress that they can comfortably sleep on. That's another important point about quality sleep. Now, if you have knee pain, uh, one of the things about knee pain is, Julie, if you want to lie down, um, is to support your knees with maybe two pillows. So we'll put two pillows underneath your knees. That's great. Now, notice that she doesn't need two pillows under her head. You just want to comfortably support the neck and the head and alleviate the, the knee pain so that you can sleep comfortably through the night. Again, quality sleep. It's all about quality sleep. Now, I'll, I'll do back pain. You do back pain. Which is my problem. <laughs> you want a pillow in between my legs, is that right? Absolutely. Uh. Sleep. What a great job sleeping on a job like this. <laughs> yeah, so I did it. You did it. You're good. I mean, you're good for the, for the evening. Now, one of the things you might want to do, however, is be willing to change positions as you sleep during the night. So fidgeting while you sleep is not a bad thing. Staying in what, you know, if you rolled over to the other side, that would be fine as well. But interestingly, this is actually how we put patients to sleep. 
and for anesthesia, we put pillows under their legs, put them under their heads just to get right. us to the most comfortable position. Right. I appreciate all the advice. The Paleo Program, last more to it on DrOz.com. Be right back. Next, iconic TV producer Norman Lear shares his wisdom through the years. I saw the humor in life because it exists everywhere. How he maintains his health and agelessness through laughter. Simple ways to live longer. Next. An important piece of your health puzzle is missing. 80% of you aren't getting enough of a critical nutrient. If you want to fight all of this, find out what it is and how to get more of it. That's coming up on Monday. Norman Lear, he created some of television's all-time greatest comedies, but perhaps his greatest achievement is being healthy and happy at the age of 92. Today, this, go ahead and celebrate it. It's good news for everybody. Today, this television legend is here to share some of his simple secrets to living a long and fulfilling life. What are you so worried about a baby being born? It's a beautiful and natural thing. Now, wait, wait, hold those, stop them. <laughs> From All in the Family, Maud and Good Times, to The Jeffersons, One Day at a Time, and Sanford and Son. You hear that, Elizabeth? I'm coming to join you, honey. Norman Lear created groundbreaking programs that revolutionized American television. At their peak, his string of TV hits were viewed by 120 million people a week. He often pushed the envelope, putting a spotlight on taboo topics, including serious, even controversial health issues never before addressed on mainstream sitcoms. Vivian, I'm pregnant. When you were young, abortion was a dirty word. It's not anymore. Now you think about that. But no matter how serious the issue, Lear still found the humor. It's the change of life. Oh, my. <laughs> if you're going to have a change of life, you got to do it right now. Now, at 92, Norman Lear is opening up about his extraordinary life in even this I get to experience. A memoir filled with drama, wisdom, and, of course, side-splitting laughter. <laughs> Everyone, please welcome Norman Lear. Um, I, 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 we were talking about this. I don't think most of us would have had a childhood without you. It's remarkable how much you influenced us. And yet here you were at I, I, I would not have had a childhood without me also. <laughs> That's true. I, I really had to begin someplace. You did. <laughs> how did you do it? What's the secret to living in 92 with the vitality you have? I think maybe it's going to bed uh, with the taste of coffee in your mind the next morning. <laughs> with the sight of your children the next morning, waking up to do it again, you know. I, I like waking up. That's a good thing to do. <laughs> you mentioned your kids. Yeah. For those of you who don't know this, Norman has children who are ranged from 68 to age 20. Yes. Which is a, quite a gap. <laughs> yeah. When you talk to them, how does that rejuvenate you? Well, the way I feel about it, I'm your peer. If I'm talking to you at, what, 52, 54. Yeah. 54, I'm 54. If I'm talking to a 20-year-old, I'm 20. If I'm talking to an 82-year-old, I see less of them all the time. <laughs> um, I'm 82. So what would an 82-year-old version of yourself, you, or, uh, or 92 version, which is even you know, more mature, tell a 20-year-old version of yourself? What happens when you turn 90 is nothing changes except they change. The people observing you change. When I was 88, 89, I was 88, 89. As soon as, soon as I turned 90, I got applause walking across the room. <laughs> <laughs> Something happens to the other people. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. And even that I get to experience. Even that you get to experience. So when I started doing the show, uh, I had a passion and I desired that people would take the information off the television screen into their lives. Mm -hmm. Talk about it at the water cooler, at dinner table, right. et cetera. You did that to a much greater extent. You were able to change in, in very iconic ways the conversations you were having. Archie Bunker and racism. Uh, Maude's abortion that we saw that little clip of. Why was that so important for you to go beyond the confines of a TV screen? 
because I was a, a sensible, serious guy. I saw the humor in life because uh, it exists everywhere. Uh, but, but I saw it seriously and I attracted people around me, other writers, other producers and so forth. There was so much going on in our families, our children, our marriages, uh, our culture, the, you know, and the way all of that impacted us. So all we did was deal with that. We did nothing surprising. It was a lot, I don't know whether I can say easier, but it was a lot more available than such subjects as uh, the roast is ruined and the boss is coming to dinner. Yes. When a 17-year-old child is, is in the neighborhood pregnant and the family is dealing with whether that child at 17 should have that baby and some, it would be killing something that's living to some and some say the best that could happen to that child is not to see its birth. Is there a legacy that you would like to have that you'd love us to remember you with? I would love, yes, uh, to, to have done something about convincing everybody that they matter. Uh, you use the term meathead. Yes. Uh, for, you know, Archie Bunker would use it, of course, to describe his son-in-law and all in the family. Were you ever a meathead with your health? Uh, with my health? With your health. Uh, my father called me a meathead all the time. He did? Oh, yeah. I heard that all the time. Um, meathead dead from the neck up. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, but were you ever a meathead with your health? Uh, I'm sure. I smoked until I made a film called Cold Turkey in Iowa. Oh. And, uh, and uh, when I made, it was about a, 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 a city that tried to give up smoking. All its smokers, almost everybody did tried to give up smoking. It was a riotously funny, I think, piece. Uh, and I, I determined to quit smoking when I got on that set. That was it. But overall, you lived a pretty healthy life. What was the catalyst to, for that decision? The catalyst was, honestly, even this I get to experience. I like getting up in the morning. I appreciate every breath I take. Well, if you're willing to, I'd love to tease out some of these tips from you. So I put some yoga mats over here. Come over here. Okay. I've heard rumors about your flexibility. All the things that Norman does to stay <laughs> as youthful as he looks on the inside we'll and outside. All right, so take me through a stretch you might do, for example. Well, if there was a chair here, the first stretch I'll do is this. And try to get my behind as far up as I can. You have a nice behind, by the way, Norman. No, oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Has anybody? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so, I do. I do that. Uh, it used to surprise people that I could touch my toes. Oh my goodness! Look at that. Look at that. A three-finger touch. A three-finger touch. Yes, I used to be able to get my fists on, but son of a gun. <laughs> So you're 92. Yes. You're a vibrant man. You've done so much that folks would be proud of, just to be able to associate with you a little bit. There's something that made your heart keep beating. What is that compelling well, Isn't purpose? that the most incredible thing? When people talk to me about something they believe mythically, and I, can, I, can, I don't really believe it, but I think if I can believe in that finger, if I can believe in this thumb, I can believe in anything. Anything is possible. Because this is the miracle of miracles. And that heart that you talk about, beating 92 bloody years, day in and day out, everything moving. We're miracles. I love you, Norman. I Thank you for being too. here. Norman's new Thank book, you. Even This I Get to Experience, is available now. It is absolutely fabulous. We'll be right back. Coming up, it's something every woman dreads, embarrassing and painful, the constant state of gas pain. The problem may not be what you eat, but how you eat. Learn to prevent it before it strikes and stop gas in its tracks. Stay tuned. Today I'm talking about something every woman dreads, gas pain. And you'll do just about anything you can to get rid of it. 
So I wanted to find out when most of you had the most gas. So I put up a poll on DrOz.com to find out. This is crazy. 43% of you said you're in a constant state of gas. You got problems all the time. You can only imagine what's going on in the audience right now. So we're gonna relieve you of your biggest source of gas pain, but first I need my assistant of the day to help out. So if you're in lucky number, how about 13? 13, where's 13? Come now, 13. You are my assistant of the day. Welcome to the show. What's your name? Jessica. May I get a hug? Yes, please. Are you <laughs> And who are you sitting with up there? It looks like a daughter or something. Um, my daughter, Cassidy, and our friend, Kristen. Wow, they're very beautiful. Thanks for bringing them as well. Thank you. If I were to ask them, I don't know if they'd be honest about it, when would they, would they say you're a gassy person, for one? Um, my daughter would Thumbs say, Thumbs up, yes. yes. Lots. Yes, it's kind of a family joke. It is? Yes. Like, what kinds of jokes do you tell about yourselves? Um, I find it very humorous. I don't know why. <laughs> What's the most embarrassing place you've had a gas problem? Church. Church. Work. Ooh. Church and Where work. you really just don't want to have gas. No. These are quiet, soulful yes. places. Yes. <laughs> All right. So some of, the, some of the biggest sources of gas actually related not to what we're eating, but how fast we eat what we eat. All right, come on over here. Let me just talk about the speed and how it affects your gas problems. Now, the body is designed to digest food at a certain pace. So stand right over here, and you can help me do this little experiment. This is your body. Okay. All right. Are you happy with that? Not bad. Not bad. All right. So when we eat slowly, and go ahead, I want you to feed, you can pour it right in there, feed this body some food slowly. When you eat slowly, you chew your food thoroughly, you digest it like it's supposed to be. It, it actually creates a little bit of digestive cr craziness down there. It's supposed to. You're going to make a little bit of gas as you, as you digest, but it's not that much and it's not so much you can't manage. In fact, you won't even notice that. But when you scarf down a meal as fast as you can, between loads of laundry or driving your daughter around, picking people up and taking people off, you can't break down the food quite as readily. So go ahead and pour that down as fast as you can. That's eating quickly. And that gas will start to build up pretty fast. And when it builds up, it's not a pretty scene. The gas now is becoming overwhelming. It begins to come out of all the holes in your body, <laughs> right? From down below, from above, you're feeling bloated, you get that bubbly feeling, and all you want to do is, is the word fart the right word? Pretty much. Yes. Yeah. And it makes that it sound, out. right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's at church or at work or wherever the heck you've been, and it's become so overwhelming, it, beca you know, it becomes an embarrassing issue. We joke about it to relieve the tension, mm -hmm. but it's not really what we want. In fact, this is, oh, this is getting ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that ever happen too? Um, sure, Ev everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. right. So sure. if you want to avoid this, go from eating fast to eating slowly. It's a pretty simple tip, but one that'll be very effective. That looks bad. We better yeah. get away from here. Come over here, let's run away. Here's my rule of thumb. Dr. Raj's rule of thumb, your meal should take you 15 minutes. 15 minutes to eat. That's not a lot of time. Just 15 minutes and test yourself. Most of us would woof that food down in five minutes, mm -hmm. creating that catastrophe look that's going on behind me. Mm -hmm. All right, now, I want you to raise your hand over there if you think you've gotten a gas problem right now. Everybody, <laughs> gas, you got gas people, here's one. Oh, let me get the microphone. Oh, come on over here. So where, who, who is your hand? Yeah. All right, what's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer. Stand, stand up, Jennifer. So you're Jennifer and Jessica. Yes. Oh, we got a whole thing covered. Yeah. And what's that feeling in your stomach that you're having right now? Bubbles. Bubbles? Just, I, can, I can feel it. Feel it. Because I eat super fast. So you, does it look like that mannequin over there that's overflowing? Oh, yeah. Belching. Oh, both ends, yes. <laughs> oh, both ends. We're going to stand over here then. All right. <laughs> So, I ate a couple hours ago. So, so I've, you know, I, I know a lot of times my advice comes a little too little too late because you've already put the food down. Did you have a, a rapid lunch, by the way? L rapid yes. breakfast? Slice of pizza quick. Slice of pizza even? Oh, yes. so much yeah. the better. Do it. So if you already have gas, little tip that actually works pretty well and it's very inexpensive is look for products that have some methicone in them. They come in all kinds of forms. Now you get them in little strips oh. as well. Have you seen these things? No. These are wonderful for a bunch of reasons. So methicone, I don't know if you know much about it, it helps get rid of gas. It takes the bubbles and it breaks them up so they can combine to make bigger bubbles so you can get them out faster. It doesn't, it's actually, think about it, you just have one big fart and you're done with the thing. <laughs> so light a fire and be done with the whole stuff. There you go. Awesome. And these convenient, take one of these strips. Thank you. And the best part about these you is go. you can put them on your tongue like a breath. Oh, okay. In fact, I have seen these, you have Listerine it. ones, but yeah. not this. <laughs> are, are either of you guys married? Yes. All right, so the, for your husbands especially, do they pass gas sometimes? Uh, constantly. So tell him, tell him it's a breath He's going to love that. Yes, oh, and no. just put it on his tongue. He won't know the difference. Huh? And you'll just be thinking it's about his mm -hmm. breath when really what you're doing is preserving your sanctity that night. 
everybody. Thank you very much. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Thank you. Nicely done. Thank you. you go to DrOz.com to learn more easy and effective ways to fight gas. I'll be right back. Next, don't have time to get healthy? Think again. We're revealing 10-second solutions to boost your immunity. Learn to prevent common ailments like colds and sinus infections. Simple, clever ways to keep your whole family healthy. Next. An important piece of your health puzzle is missing. 80% of you aren't getting enough of a critical nutrient. If you want to fight all of this, find out what it is and how to get more of it. That's coming up on Monday. Think you don't have time to get healthy? Well, think again. I'm giving you a permanent home on my show. It's a new segment. We're going to call it the 10 Second Solutions. And today I'm going to reveal 10 Second Solutions to boost your immunity. Now, I challenge viewers to give me their best 10 Second Solutions. They came in from all over the country. And I chose the ones that I think will work best for you. Let's start with a 10 Second Immunity Boost that will stave off stomach sickness. It's oregano oil and then it's nominated by Nanette. So, how did you figure this out? My hubby, my hubby, my hubby. Oh, my. <laughs> He had been using it, told me about it. I was feeling a little queasy, stomach bothering me. He said, try it. I did it and hooked ever since. So how do you use it? Well, a couple of drops under the tongue. So only the oil. You can't eat the actual oregano itself? No. Just the oil. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll be the guinea pig. Thank you, thank you. I only have 10 seconds. Okay. Ah. One, two. Gotcha. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> a little powerful. That's a distinctive, that's a mouthwash. Yeah. You wash it out with water or anything, or alcohol or something? I might put a little bit of water in there. Let my mouth on no fire alcohol. with that. Whoa. But it turns out, it, you know, I checked all these out. This one really does work very well. Mm -hmm. You get all these bad bacteria growing in your gut. If I choke, call 911. <laughs> we'll do. And those bad bacteria dominate your digestive system sometimes. You get a little bit of nausea or bloating in there. So a little bit of oregano oil knocks those bad boys out and leaves more room for the good bacteria to prosper. So if you survive it, wow, that is strong. Yeah. You'll do well. Thank you. That surprised me. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, Tutti has won a 10-second solution to help your immunity and prevent sinus infections. Tutti, take it away. What's the tip? Mm -hmm. Humming. Mm -hmm. Who told you about humming? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, my mentor. I've been practicing yoga for years now, and I recently started teaching here in New York. And she taught me that the benefits of humming come from the breath because the vibrations that you bring in when you're humming, that sound, right. really declogs and breaks up anything that might be clogging you. So it sounds kooky, <laughs> but there's actually been a lot of papers written on this in the scientific literature. And let me walk everyone through why I love this tip so much. So normally when you breathe, your sinuses do many things, but they actually release a very small amount of a gas called nitric oxide. So it comes out just a little whiff from your nose in a normal little breath. That's it. And then it flows away and you are done. And that's what you do every single time you take a breath. We learned about this putting breathing tubes in patients in the hospital because you can't breathe through your nose right. and we actually lose this gas. But let's say you start to hum. Do what you're saying, for example, in yoga and other meditations. So let's go, how about twinkle, twinkle, little stars? Join me. Okay. If you hum, you vibrate the sinuses and they release a lot more of this. Watch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, get that towards you, not me. <laughs> Nobody choking in oregano oil. So, the, the, the gas that's released is a lot more. Can you see me? <laughs> Barely. Right, right. <laughs> so, the, the, but this gas is actually powerfully important for us because it really opens up our blood vessels to let blood go more places. In fact, there was a Nobel Prize awarded for research on this crazy gas. So, it's a very valuable tool, although it's ages old. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right. And our last 10 second immunity boost will help prevent the common cold is a very simple one. It was nominated by several people, but Mara is joining us to talk about pumpkin seeds. So how'd you discover this? Well, as a raw vegan, I eat a lot of nuts and seeds and I had heard that pumpkin seeds are great cold fighters. So I put them in my smoothies and salads at home. So let me, if I can't explain to everyone why I love pumpkin seeds so okay. much. Pumpkin seeds have a lot of zinc. And zinc is a really powerful tool because it stops one of the most common viruses that causes the common cold. So you get about eight milligrams of zinc. It's about the amount you find in a cup of pumpkin seeds. Eat as many as you can. You don't have to get it all from pumpkin seeds. Uh, and you'll be able to hopefully bring it off the coast. So how do you actually incorporate it into your life? Well, I, I make smoothies. And these are the ingredients that I use in my smoothies. I use raw pumpkin seeds, dates, co shredded coconut, and a banana, and also a cup of almond milk. 
Just put it in your Vitamix or whatever blender blend. And it looks like this? Cheers. Wow. Enjoy. Will, will this wash away oregano oil? <laughs> Hopefully, I don't know. This is much better than oregano oil over there. <laughs> I'll do this in a second. This is a very tasty 10 second Thank solution. You. Thank you very much for this one. <laughs> is that, I got one more 10 second solution to boost immunity. It may be the most powerful one of all and it involves one of the favorite things I do with my wife. You guys all do it as well. It's called kissing. I don't know where this picture came from, but I gotta say microorganisms are exchanged when you kiss. That's what we were doing in that image. Uh, and it's been shown to boost your immunity. So I want you to find someone that you love dearly and go give them a big kiss and exchange some bodily fluids because it'll help with your immune system. Do it tonight. <laughs> one kiss, we'll be right back. <laughs> Do you have a health question for Dr. Oz? Is it true that you cannot burn fat in one specific area of the body? I really want to burn stomach fat and continuously do sit-ups with no results. Go to blog.dr.oz.com and ask questions on Twitter with hashtag OzQuestion. Next, a boss struggling with his weight, his coworker wanting to hear again, their enduring friendship, how he's raising money to help him lose weight and to gain her hearing. Their story will inspire you. Coming up next on The Dr. Oz Show. We are bringing healthy back this season. I want you to bring it too. Grab your prescription pad for fun and sign up for free tickets today. You can go to DrOz.com slash tickets and sign up. Did I get it right? <laughs> this year, I'm inspiring you to dream bigger than ever before. And with that, I'm gonna help make your health dreams come true. Today's guest stream was so inspiring that I had to share it with all of you. To most of us, the kitchen where Kelly Elliott works as a chef would be definitely loud. But Kelly, here's nothing. Kelly! That's because Kelly is deaf. I was a child when I lost my hearing. At age six, Kelly was diagnosed with meningitis. And her high fever, she says, caused nerve damage to her ears. As a deaf child, she felt isolated. I started reading. I read a lot. I just pretty much buried myself in books. Kelly still reads books and lips. In fact, she communicates entirely by lip reading. Kelly can be on the other side of the kitchen, and I can yell down to her that I need something, and she can read my lips from across the room. She gets what we need. Um, she's always there, and she is a firecracker. We love her. Even though Kelly copes, there's one thing she yearns to hear. The voices of her two sons. To be able to hear my voice, it would be totally awesome. I couldn't even describe that. That would make me cry. And that's what inspired Kelly's boss, Al. For Christmas, we want to give her the gift of sound. She's never heard her son's voice before. It's the least I could do to help her. Al wanted to help Kelly get a cochlear implant, a device that partially restores hearing for the deaf, but can cost up to $100,000. At the same time, Al decided he needed a change in his life too. Realize I'm a little overweight right now and want to make a life change. I have three kids that I've raised and I want to be there for him for the future. So he came up with a plan, a Facebook campaign called Pounds for Sounds. For every pound Al loses, people can donate money to pay for Kelly's cochlear implant. Donors have already pledged $2,000, and Al has lost 16 pounds. The most motivating thing I've ever done, Kelly's hearing depends on it. To be able to hear it again, it would be a dream come true. And Kelly are here. So, Al, you have a very special connection to Kelly. What yes. drew you to her? Well, personally, she's so likable. And really, in our work, she makes it like family. On a professional level, you know, I'm grateful for that she's there because her work ethic and just the type of person she is, you know, it makes me look good and my department look good. Kelly, how does it make you feel to know that Al's in your corner? It makes me feel awesome. He's been pretty awesome about the whole thing. He, um, if I have a problem with something, he's there. He'll listen. He'll help with everything. I also have a special surprise for both of you because I adore your story. So I'm asking all of you to record a sound that you want to share with Kelly. 
for, you know what, when she gets her cochlear implant, that's what we're gonna play for her. If you could save just one sound in your memory, what would it be? Would it be your children's laughter, a wedding song, the ocean? I want you to share it with me on Facebook and Twitter with hashtag OzSound. Tag three of your friends as well, do the exact same. Together we're gonna to spread the message and make sure you can get your cochlear implant. God bless both of you. You can find out more information on how to donate to Kelly on DrOz.com. I'll be right back. <laughs> important piece of your health puzzle is missing. 80% of you aren't getting enough of a critical nutrient. If you want to fight off all sorts of problems, find out what it is and how to get more of it. Plus, Beverly Hills housewife Lisa Vanderpump's home remedy for great skin. Doesn't this feel good? It actually feels divine. Her secrets to looking and feeling younger. All new eyes. That's coming up on Monday. I've always loved holiday gift shopping, but I hate, really hate wasting time standing in line. I know I'm not alone, so I want to share my trick for making that time count. So while you wait, you can exercise. That's what this is called, the why you can wait exercise. Angela, you wanna join me? Sure. These little gifts for you I picked up on the way over. <laughs> I made that up, they're empty. All right, so take your two bags, split them up. No, they're not, they're not getting all three bags. All right, so first get in your position, evenly balancing yourself with bags in each hand. And then when you're ready, you're gonna stand up straight, go on your toes like this. And then keep yourself there. Now lower yourself slowly down and repeat. Right, now there's a more advanced form of the while you wait exercise. You ready to do that? Sure. Go on one leg. Let me see you can do this. And you go up 10 times, right? On one foot. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Want to hold each other up? Right. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be surprised. More difficult than it looks. It's good for you. All You're right. going to get knocked out in the line. <laughs> Here. Enjoy all these gifts. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Thank you, Angela. All right. Now it's time for In Case You Missed It. My tip for quick gas pain relief, Symethicone strips. Symethicone is the ingredient that helps you pass gas more efficiently. That's right, you get the gas out faster, that gets rid of the gas pain and the bloating. So carry around these little convenient strips, pop one in your tongue whenever gas strikes. It makes the bubbles coalesce so they're together in one spot so you can get them all out, all out at once. Just warn your friends. Next, 10 second solutions to boost your immunity. We talked about pumpkin seeds helping to prevent the common cold. And the reason for that is zinc really does help. May, perhaps might even stop one of the viruses that causes some colds. So women ought to get eight milligrams of zinc per day. That's about three quarters of a cup of pumpkin seeds. But I gotta say, there's another 10 second kissing, or rather 10 second solution that I really liked a bit more to help your immunity, it's called kissing. The microorganisms exchanged when you kiss have been shown to boost your immunity. Just make sure that you're kissing someone that's healthy. <laughs> Finally, be careful of dubious people online that make it seem like they're endorsing their products. I don't. To see a full list of our trusted sponsors and partners, you can go to DrOz.com, and I'll see you next time. Woo!